Well, tonight we're going to start a series, Consequences of Gossip. And uh, I am going to read from two verses of Scripture uh, tonight. And uh, 1 Timothy 5, verse 13, and we, a, Ephesians 4, verse 29. 1 Timothy 5, 13. Ephesians 4, verse 29. I want you to turn in there. Uh, as I mentioned the week before last, it's going to be a uh, three-part uh, series, which may take four or five Wednesdays. Uh, tonight will probably be, be relatively short, uh, but due to what the second part is and how lengthy it is, I don't want to tie the second in with the first. So, uh, but next week we'll get into that one. But the three parts is the first one we're going to talk about tonight, what gossip is. And then the second part is going to be what gossip does. And then the third part is going to be how, how should Christians respond to gossip. So tonight is what gossip is. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 13. It says, and with all they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Now that same verse in the English Standard Version says, besides that, they learn to be idlers, going about from house to house, and not only idlers, but also gossip and busybodies, saying what they should not. Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 29, it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That same verse in the New Living Translation says it like this, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. I mean, you can be seated. God created man as a social being. And for the most part, people don't like to be alone. And as a rule, we like to be with other people, and we like to talk to other people. Sometimes it could be more fun just talking to ourselves, <laughs> but, but we like to talk to other people, amen. It starts to become an issue when you begin to answer yourself, so. Um, but the ability to communicate it does bring great blessings to each and every one of us. But, there was going to be a but there. The devil also uses this communication, this human com communication, as a means of spreading sin and grief. And, and I'm pretty sure that we're all painfully aware of um, the damage that can be caused by our words. I remember growing up, and there used to be a saying that was, you know, pretty widespread, sticks and stones may break my bones, but your, your words will not harm you. That really is the furthest thing from the truth. Most of the times, our words will do more damage than what sticks and stones will do. Amen. Um, but the tongue, as it tells us in James chapter 3, the tongue is a fire, and it's also an unruly evil full of deadly poison. It's a fire, an unruly evil full of deadly poison. That's your tongue. Of all the sins committed with the tongue, there is one that is especially a problem for some Christians. 
want to say many Christians, but for some Christians, we'll leave it like that. And that is the sin of gossip. If we're honest, how often when we talk about sin, or you know, what we we think of gossip as being a sin. We don't. We don't often think of that. Uh, we think of, you know, the big ones. Uh, we used to say the three big ones was uh, smoking, drinking, and uh, oh, I forgot the other one. But it, it's more than that. It, I mean, sin is sin. And then if it's a white lie or if it's adultery, sin is sin. That's right. Now, your sin will have a greater consequences here on earth. Depends on what you do, but in God's eyes, sin is sin. And we all need to ask forgiveness of. And, and gossip is one of those that, that we need to ask forgiveness of. So we want to look tonight at what gossip is. Number one, Gossip is idle talk and rumors about the private affairs of others. Gossip is idle talk and rumors about the private affairs of others. Just like any other sin um, that, that brings satisfaction or, or pleasure, uh, I, I remember when I didn't live for God. And what brought me satisfaction or pleasure was nicotine, alcohol, and drugs. It, it brought satisfaction to me. It brought pleasure. Um, and, and we think of that when we say addiction, we, we think of those, those three. But how often do we think that or think of gossip as also being uh, an addiction? It can be addictive to some people. Um, and we also must know that the sin of gossip is not to be uh, accepted. It's not to be excused. Neither should it be overlooked. Amen. Should it be accepted, shouldn't be uh, excused, or should it be uh, overlooked. A gossiper, just like you would deal or should deal with an addict of drugs or alcohol, we should treat someone of gossip in the same way. And it's an addiction. So, um, so a, just as an alcoholic or a drug addict has to work hard, a gossiper must work hard too to overcome their sin. And so gossip is an idle talk and rumors about the private affair of others. The second thing, gossip is talking about someone in a negative way that can lead others to doing the same. Gossip is talking about someone in a negative way that could lead to others doing the same. Gossip is often intentional and meant to damage someone's credibility um, it, it's meant to damage their reputation or in some cases we're, we're jealous and we just want to point out somebody else's faults or sins to, to other people. I've always had this saying, don't judge me because I sin differently than you. That's right. Amen. None of us are perfect. As long as we're here, as long as we're wrapped in this, this flesh, we will not be perfect. But we can strive for that perfection. And um, so uh, gossip is everywhere. And it used to be the tale when I was growing up, if you wanted to get some news spread around, just telephone, telegraph, telephone. I didn't come up with that. That's just what was always said. Uh, but but, so, uh, but it's, it's among men as well. Yes. Very much as mo among men. And, and, and no, we can't weigh it as, not as much. It doesn't matter how much it is. Gossip is gossip and sin is gossip. And gossip is sin. Amen. But, but that's what was when we was growing up. You know, telephone, telegraph, telephone. But, uh, but it's just, as, it, it's, it's everywhere. It's among men and women. Um, and unfortunately, it's, it's more so 
in the Christian circle than it is in the secular world. Um, and and it, 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 whether we and, and we need to understand that whether we're facing gossip among other believers or among, amongst others that we know that are not believers that are our acquaintance, it's important that that we avoid being pulled into that gossip, especially as a Christian. And if it's a non-Christian that's that's doing the gossip, uh, we do the same thing if it's Christian, Christian too. But but we we do everything we can. It's important to be, to avoid being pulled into that gossip. And more importantly, we should attempt to not, we should attempt to prevent the spreading of the gospel. And oftentimes by just listening, we spread it. By just listening in on it. Uh, and the third thing about gossip, what gossip is, is gossip is contagious. And it is one of the strategies that the enemy uses to divide us as Christians. It's one of his strategies, one of his many strategies, but this is one of them. Um, so gossip is contagious, and it's one of the strategies that the enemy uses to divide us as Christians. How many know that that is, a, that is one of his main goals is to cause division in the church? Yes. Amen. If he can cause division in the church, and how are we going to have unity come together and great things happen? Amen. And the thing about gossip, though, it plays on mostly on the small thoughts that we already have in our heads and our hearts. And it, it tempts us to, um, to go further or to engage in, uh, further in discussions. And that discussion can only cause harm or only do harm for us to others. We, we harm one another when we talk about one another. And no one, no one is immune from being sucked into it. We can all be sucked into it. If I ask you to raise your hand tonight, I'm sure all of us could raise our hand and say, yeah, I've been sucked into some gossip before. And if we're honest, it kind of felt good. Why did it feel good, Trace? Because we kind of felt a part of the group that was that was doing it. We was looking for their um, their acceptance. But no one is immune from being sucked into it, especially Christians. We are just as, if not more, vulnerable or uh, susceptible to engaging in conversation that quickly become hurtful, that, that can quickly become hurtful to someone else or their faith. I've talked to someone in the last probably week or two that they've been hurt severely. And it wasn't just a, uh, and I don't mean that, it wasn't a lay, lay person in the church, it was a leader, it was a pastor that hurt them by spreading some things. Um, so when we hurt people, we hurt their relationship with God. Now I know we should rise above it, but how many has been hurt by words before? Whether it was the truth or the lie, I mean, we've been hurt by words before. Um, so, so when we engage in these discussions and we take part of them, we do harm to us and to others. Uh, and we hurt their faith. Gossip hurts people in so many ways. Even the, the smallest of chatter among friends can quickly explode into a very large conversation. It, it, it can get out of hand real quickly. Uh, even overheard by others not directly involved in the conversation. And many times the stuff being talked about is only speculation with no actual proof. But even if there is proof, what good can come from that discussion? What good can come from it, even if there is proof? And the state of our hearts is a good indication as to what gossip is. Even if there is proof. You know, in doing this, I thought about this, and uh, 
and I'm guilty of it. And there's others in here that are guilty of it. And I'm going to use this as an example. And Sister Cindy, I hope you don't mind me using you as an example. She's, well, she's one of us now, but she's one of the newest. Uh, but there's been times that I'm going to tell on us. We've sat over here in this kitchen, or we've sat here, and somebody was going to do something, and somebody spoke up and said, well, don't do that, because sister so-and-so is, this is the way she does it, and you do it, it might, you know. Well, sister Cindy don't know sister so-and-so that well, or brother so-and-so that well, but she's at the entrance of the fellowship hall, and she's got her back, and she hears that, She's going to think, man, Sister so and so must be something else. <laughs> you know, we don't want to, we don't want to get on her bad side. We don't, you, you see how this simple conversation, even though it was truthful, we were doing it between us, but when somebody overhears it, you know, and I'm not saying she would, but I just, but if they don't know and they overhear something like that, uh, so, so let's be careful what we're saying. And, let me say this, if we're talking from a position of bitterness, the first thing, if you're bitter, you need to just keep your mouth shut. Amen. So if we're talking from a position of bitterness, especially if we're not talking to the pers person to, to whom we're bitter with, then we're also engaging in gossip. We're also engaging in gossip. But and if we are anger, or if we in anger with someone and speaking of that anger to another before speaking to that person that we are angry with, then we're gossiping. Doesn't the Bible say that we have fault with our brother or sister? We we'll go to our brother or sister. Yeah. Why do we go to another brother or sister in the church besides the one we have fault with and we have an issue with? In uh, doing those things, we're actually gossiping. The fourth of the fifth of what gossip is, gossip is a negligent scattering of ungrounded accusations and misrepresentations. Gossip is a negligent scattering of ungrounded accusations and misrepresentations. As Christ is body, and we are, we are his hands and we are his feet, and actually we're his mouthpiece at this moment, gossip should be far from our lips. What is not our concern is not ours to discuss. What is not our concern is not ours to discuss. Gossip also happens when we seek to protect or defend ourselves. A person may come to you appearing to seek counsel when they just want you to agree with them. How many has had those in your life? I know I have. They just, they just want us to hear them out just agree with them. Just go right along with them. And uh, somebody point a finger somebody right now. Uh, but but we have to be careful who we listen to. Uh, now in saying that, be careful who we listen to. <clears throat> Let me kind of get off just a little bit. I think in the Christian world, there's an art that we have lost. And that is the art of listening. Okay. Um, I bring this up because I was... Uh, talking with someone about depression or other things. And, uh, nine times out of ten, if somebody wants to come and speak to you, they don't need you to speak to them. They just want you to listen. Listen to everything they've got to say. So, uh, so that, that, that's off to the subject of gossip, but I just want to bring that to your attention. But we need to learn how to listen to people when they have issues and when they have problems. Just keep our mouth shut. 
there's, there's a good chance all we're going to speak is generic words that we've been taught to say. So we keep our mouth shut and we listen to what they have to say. Uh, I just want to throw that in off of the gossip thing. But um, uh, when you, even though you're not actively participating, but when you listen to the gossip of others, and you, you know, it can cause someone to take offense, it can cause a, a friend or an acquaintance or uh, even a leader or spouse, okay, to take offense. Even when we don't add to the gossip by our words, when we choose to hear it, we're guilty by association. And y'all heard her saying, if they're going to gossip to you, they're gossiping about you. So think about that when someone wants to gossip. What are they saying to somebody else about me? Um, so gossip is, is the negligent scattering of ungrounded accusations and misrepresentations. What is, not our, what is not our concern is not ours to discuss. And then the final thing on what gossip is, gossip is rooted in unbelief and watered by fear. Gossip is rooted in unbelief and watered by fear. Gossip is ultimately the overflow of a heart condition. It's an overflow of a heart condition, of a heart condition. To get rid of gossip's fruits and heal its wounds, we must answer it with words of wisdom that promote reconciliation. That promote reconciliation. Our text from Ephesians again, it says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And I'll close tonight with two questions. And that first question is, can you, I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hands. I'm not going to ask anybody to come to the altar. Now, if you want to come to the altar, you can. But, but can you honestly say that in the past month, you haven't even once talked unwholesomely or talked about one person to another in some negative way? Can you honestly say that in the past month you haven't even once talked unwholesomely or talked about one person to another in some negative way? Thinking about it, if you have, there's a good chance that we didn't ask forgiveness because we often don't think of gossip as sin. Here's a second question. Have you, in the last month, talked to one person about another person airing some grievance that you have with the second person? It could be a family, it could be a word, church. See, gossip is sin. And when we do those things, do we ask God to forgive us? And do we go to those and make it right? And we ask Him to forgive us. So we have to be careful with the words, and we have to be careful with what we're listening to and what we're eavesdropping in on. You know, I'm just eavesdropping on the No, it's going to come a time you're going to use what you heard, and eventually it will hurt someone. So if you have, that's unwholesome, and it does not build up. Gossip only tears down. It, you know, let's be honest, gossip sometimes is fun for a little while. There's laughter involved. But if you step back and realize how much you're hurting that person, you, you've been on the other end of the spectrum before when somebody's been talking about you, haven't you? 
and gossip about you and that feeling you have? Why is it we want somebody else to feel that same feeling that we do? Why is it that we want to gossip about something? Why do we want to participate in it? So it doesn't build up, it tears down. It doesn't unite, it divides. It hurts, it doesn't heal. That's what gossip does. And, uh, you know, it's, it's gossip and sin. So we need to add that to the list of things that we need to ask God to forgive us of. So that's part one of what gossip is. And next two will be, uh, next, part two next week will be what gossip does. And, and I'm positive that will take uh, two Wednesdays on that because it's rather lengthy. Uh, but I didn't want to roll it in to this week's. Uh, but let's, let's have a whole new outlook on gossip and, and what it is, uh, what it can do to people. And this, these are things that are not, they're not strange. We know this. And, and, and I'm not saying that we're going to get to know about some gossip going on in church. That's why you put no, that's not why I'm doing it. It's not, not, why, not why I'm doing this. It's just to bring awareness. Just to make sure we don't get comfortable. Make sure we don't get complacent in what we're doing um, to keep us alert. Just like when you do other things, it gets repetitive. You, you, you learn from it. You, you, you just stay on top of it. And, uh, and that's what this series is about, is to make, the, that, make an awareness to where we are and, and make sure we don't get comfortable, make sure we don't get complacent in it. So the consequences of gossip, part two will be next week, what gossip does. And uh, we uh, hope and pray for you in fact that that Wednesday. Amen. What are you saying? Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. God, we thank you for those who are here. And God, I pray, Lord, that we heard, Lord, not just with our ears, but with our hearts, God. And God, if there's any that's involved in gossip, God, that we would ask forgiveness, Lord. We would go to that person and ask forgiveness, God. Make things right, God. We don't want to intentionally to hurt someone, God. So, Bring those things to our limits, God. God, help us to make things right, God. It may, it may be hard to do, God, but help us to make things right, God. And ask you, most of all, God, to forgive us for the sins that we have committed for. God, that you would take those sins, God, and you would take them and throw them as far as the east is from the west, God, that you would remember no more, God. And help us, God, Lord, to clean our talk up, God, to, to clean our conversations up, God. And, God, to even stop gossip when it takes place, Lord. God, we ask this in your name, Jesus, and we give you all the glory. Everybody say amen. Amen. Give this to us. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory in Jesus' name.